weeks to the Breeders' Cup. It's time to dish on the Breeders' Cup Classic. David, we took a week off. We waited for the big weekend of preps uh, to final, not finalize the field, but give us uh, a sense of you know who the, the the contenders and pretenders are. And I have to take my medicine before we get to the contenders. Muth pretender. Muth was bad. I was on the Muth train for that race because it felt like he was the one up and comer. He he was wide a little, but he was absolutely terrible. No, of the three, was... Well, of the three older races, I thought the California race, obviously, that was a very good race. And I saw the numbers for everything that seemed to be a success in general. But I know National Treasure was going to the mile, but the other two in there, I thought they have a shot, shot in the Classic, not a huge sure. one. But I thought that was a really good race. I don't – Muth, obviously, I, I highly doubt Muth shows up at the Breeders' Cup. And if he did, I guess it would maybe be the mile. But he after that race, he's definitely probably not going to the Classic. You might not see him for a while, maybe the Pegasus or something like that. But I don't think – I don't think he's going to be in the Breeders' Cup off that, but I could be wrong. Nah, that's not Baffert's style. I mean, he, for all that he has done, whatever. But he's realistic. Yeah, uh, he he understands the value of a prep, and he, he I just don't see him bringing a horse into any Breeders' Cup race off that prep. So, yeah, no, he youth is sure. out. Uh, look at my fair odds. I, I took him out. He's not in your top 10. Uh, I know you and I both liked him, but we do agree. Number one, most likely winner as of now. Doesn't mean he's going to be worth a bet on Classic Day. Doesn't mean we think he's a cinch, but you and I agree he's in the one spot. I don't know how you could argue it's anyone but fierceness at this point. Well, the other thing is, too, everybody's talking about all this pace. Well, Doorknock retired, so he's out of the picture. I mean, I'm guessing Arthur's ride's going to be the speed. I'm probably forgetting some other horses, but if you go through the list of classic contenders, there's just a lot of deep closers and a lot of horses that are middle of the pack style. So, I mean, if he gets an outside post, breaks well, he just seems like the most logical winner to me based on. And he's getting, what is he getting, September two 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 months and a couple weeks of break. So he's going to be right. fresh, ready to go. I mean, yeah. yeah I I mean, don't... Based on how he ran in the Travers, I love how this uh, this is shaping up for him. Because if, if assuming a clean trip, like you said, I mean that seems to be important for him. But if he gets first run on everyone behind him, they're not catching him. Well, the other thing is too, Del Mar is. Yeah, and Del Mar is a speed conduct um, conducive track. He's going to be forward. The stretch isn't that long at a mile. He handled Saratoga a mile and a quarter. He shouldn't have any problem with Del Mar. So he's going to get first yeah. run. And he seems like the most – everybody talks about how inconsistent he is. He has four for six this year. He seems like the most – he has the most upside in the race at this point. I guess Forever Young's kind of the wild card coming in, but he's a little pace dependent. But um, I just think fierceness going into the race, if everything goes well training-wise, he's going to be ready to absolutely fire. And I don't see all that speed everybody's talking about. I mean, Skippy Longstocking's probably not going to run now after he no. ran in the Woodward. So he's going to take – that's pace gone. I'm doorknock retired. I mean, you you can help me out here. I don't – the California no, horses, right. National I mean, Treasure was the speed. He's not running in the Classic. So I don't really know where all this speed's going to be coming from. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. I mean, you got Sierra Leone, Tap yeah, and Trice. Tesoro, the other Japanese horse. He's way off the pace. Uh, and speaking of which, I have Forever Young second, second most likely winner. I, you know, fair odds. I have him second most likely. You have him third out of ten. I'm a little, I guess, a little more bullish on City of Troy because I have him among my top ten. You don't at all. What, what, what's just not trusting uh, Aiden on the dirt in a big race, or yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's obviously a horse that's accomplished a lot in Europe on the turf. He's coming over here running against some pretty good three-year-olds and fierceness and forever young. He's just not a horse I can endorse at a short price. I guess if you drew an outside post and you thought he would stay out of the kickback and stay in the clear, and he's a horse that I'm I'm guessing is going to want to stay out of the kickback. If that's a reason, maybe somebody could like him. But if he draws inside, he's going to be way too short of a price. If he was 10, 12 to 1, he'd be fine. But – I mean, I'm guessing. I don't really know who's going to be the favorite in the race. It's really hard for me to tell. I don't. You don't think I'm, it'll be fierceness? I would assume it's him, but people love Forever Young. People love City of Troy. No, you know the horse we haven't really mentioned either. I know we'll talk about some others as Highland Falls, but yeah, no, I think City of Troy is just always going to be overbet in this situation. He'll be overbet for sure. The thing I go back to is last year after the turf. 
August Rodin. We're bringing him back at four, going for the classic. That didn't work out. He's going to the Japan Cup tour for his final career start. And then all of a sudden, oh, City of Troy is our classic horse. And obviously accomplished. Feely's earned it. I don't disagree. But it was a quick pivot. And at this short of a price, they're just going to have to do it away from a track like Churchill, which 24 years ago at Giants Causeway ran an awesome race to Tis Now. Uh, Del Mar is, I just don't see it as being as kind to the type of horses, you know, European turf style on Del Mar dirt. Uh, we've seen the Japan horses do it. That makes sense. They prep on dirt. Uh, big upset in the distaff seven years ago. But City of Troy, not Hold with on. at that price. That was already seven years ago? Yeah. 2017, right? The horse that would... was... Was it 2019? I think it was one Malathot run third in there and Dunbar Road ran second. Yeah. Is that 2019? Yeah. Oh, no, it was 2020. Man, I'm... I'm way over. 2017 was the first Breeders' Cup at Del Mar. Yes. And then Dunbar Gun Road was, was the second, and I, and I wasn't there. That That's why I'm confused. That 2017 was at Del Mar, but yeah. not without Dunbar Road. Well, I just turned 30, so, like, you were really – I was like, that was already seven years ago. I'm like, time really is <laughs> flying. So I was conf- – yeah, no, but that – Japanese horses in general, they've been running well in the Derby. Derma ran – Derma ran okay last year, didn't he, in the Classic? Second. Yeah, that's right. That was how I thought. So, yeah, Japanese horses have been proven to run well here because mostly have been true dirt horses, not turf horses trying dirt races. So, yeah, I think on the international um, standpoint, I would rather have Japanese horses over horses like City of Troy. Now, uh, we talked about pace earlier. I mean, Seize the Gray will probably go, right? And Highland Falls. But I don't know if Highland Falls is going to dead send again, but he was very, very aggressive in the Jockey Gold Cup. And he seems like a horse that really just go, gets going when they hit, you know, nine furlongs, it seems like, with his pedigree curling at a round pond with a uh, – <laughs> round pond won the Breeders' Cup, right? Yeah, this staff. This staff. Yeah, so that horse has an extremely good pedigree. So that's another horse that could be forward. I guess Lucas – our only reason I think Lucas is going to run in the Classic now is because he won the Pennsylvania Derby. I think if he would have lost the Pennsylvania Derby, they would have just had an excuse to run in the mile. But the way he won the Pennsylvania Derby – I don't see Lucas skipping for six million bucks. Is it six or well, seven? And, and if he wins the classic, he's horse of the year. Oh yeah, for sure. Because everybody mm-hmm. always talks about three year old champion. I know he won a week preakness, and I know the Pennsylvania Derby is not always the best grade one, but he has won two grade ones and he won the Pat Day Mile. If he somehow won the classic, he would be obviously yeah. horse of the year, three year old champion. Hundred percent. Any chance uh, McPeak sends Torpedo Anna to the classic? No, someone actually texted me that a few minutes ago, though, and I was thinking about it. But with um, – who just dropped out of the disc staff? Adair Manor. Without Adair Manor, I mean, she's got to beat Idiomatic. She's – I mean – When the, the Chad? Chad's horse is out. Oh. The speed one is out. Randomized. Randomized, yeah. Yeah, the closer okay. one um, – Raging C is running, but randomized is done for you. Let me ask All you a right. hypothetical question. If a crazy horse won the Breeders' Cup Classic, let's say Senior Buscador wins the Classic, <laughs> and Anna wins the Distaff by five, three or four lengths, would she get Horse of the Year? She would get Horse of the Year. She wouldn't have my vote, but she'd be Horse of the Year. So maybe in their back of their minds, if they win the Distaff and something crazy happens in the Classic. I mean, Fierceness sees the gray. Maybe a horse like Highland Falls. Um, there's only a few horses, I feel like, in the race that can win Horse of the Year. Yeah. But there's also, like, you know, like the Tapa Trices of the world. I don't think <laughs> he can win. Like, you know, those type. Maybe Absolutely. he could. But those type horses I don't think could win Horse of the Year. If she wins the this staff easily, um, then maybe she has a shot if some of these horses. Yeah. No, I, I would – I would think if one of the three-year-olds doesn't win the club, which now we're down to, to two, that would be champion, I, I would think she would get it. Because National Treasure, honestly, he was low-key in the driver's seat to win Horse of the Year if he would have won the um, California Crown, because he would have the Met Mile, the um, the Pegasus, the California Crown. Am I forgetting a race? Did he win something else? Nah. But he's not even going to the Classic now, so he he's he's out of the picture for Horse of the Year. Right. Yeah, he'll go to the dirt mile, right? 
Yeah, they. I read an article that said he's a mile or something. He's going Newgate's going to the Classic for Starlight, and then um, he's going to the uh, mile. And you're not Classic. going to the Classic. I'm not going to the Classic. <laughs> Del Mar's overrated. <clears throat> but I'm not. No, I'm just. Yeah. I've already been. I've already been. I've actually been to both Breeders' Cups at Del Mar in the last seven years. Well, I went to the first one, so I'll let you know how the third one is. So we got Keeneland this week. We got Keeneland this week. Belmont at the Aqueduct, where they race at Aqueduct, has a big weekend again. Frazette, Champagne. Yeah, two year old, two year olds on the two dirt. Two year olds, yep. Yeah. Um, Keeneland. A lot of jockey races races at Santa Anita. Yeah, Baffert will win. I don't know which Baffert will win, but one of the Bafferts <laughs> will win. He'll win his 19th and 18th American Pharaoh in what's the Philly race called now? They changed the, the name. Chandelier? So yeah, you're probably right. They changed the names in California so much I can't even keep up. <laughs> but, no, it's weird, too. If you look, I know it's based on who you have as a jockey, but a lot. Rosario, Pratt, Irad, a lot of guys are staying in New York Saturday, Friday and Saturday. Not – no Keeneland? No, they're all staying in New York Friday and mm. Saturday. Saez is getting – For Corey Lannery. Well, you know where to find him if he's in the race. He's on the rail. <laughs> he, he's on the rail regardless of who he's riding. He will be there. All right. Well, uh, to recap, you and I agree on fierceness uh, right now, number one for the classic. Uh, long shot, do we agree on that too? Because I'm sure I'm going to run it back on Tappet Trice a little, at least a little bit. We have to talk about my favorite horse in training, Tappet Trice. I was literally mid mid race, like I'm done with this horse, like I can't do this anymore. He checks turning for home, and then he somehow runs down the lone speed horse. I I, I don't know what I I don't know what that horse is. I, I can't tell what that horse is. He's extremely talented. Yeah, I mean, like, checked and then went between horses in a four horse race. Yeah, I, I, wow. I don't know. I don't know. He had a perfect trip in the Jockey Gold Cup and folded. Maybe he bounced off his big race at Monmouth off the layoff. I don't know if that was what happened. But if you would have told me he was going to win after missing the break, checking, turning for home, if you would have told me he was going to run down a good horse and Skippy Longstockings, I would have yeah. laughed at you. But then he did it, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he is. No. Well, no, give him every shot to find out in four and a half weeks. I'm a Newgate guy too. I'm throwing them in there. Yeah. I mean, that'll be a couple good prices. I think this year in the, I know we got a lot of weeks left, but I feel like this race has a lot of long shots that you can use underneath if you're against horses like City of Troy and Sierra Leone, who are going to be over bet. City of Troy being three or four to one just opens up a lot of possibilities. I mean, Sierra Leone. Then you're, you're also gonna going to have four horses that just are overmatched. So, you know, even if they're 30 or 40 to one, you got four of them plus city of Troy. I mean, that's the takeout right there. So yeah, I completely agree. An exciting race in that regard. It is. it is, but don't worry. It's at two o'clock. So set your clocks. Make sure you guys remember <laughs> that the race is like the fourth race of the day. Make it. Yeah. Uh, well, that's five on the East coast though. I actually, I just saw it's in the middle of the card again. Yeah, it's absolutely it's the in, dumbest thing on earth. Not a fan. No, let's run the Breeders' Cup turf sprint at prime time. Everybody's going to be excited for that one. Cogburn. No balls. You think? No, Cogburn. No. That's another horse we didn't mention. How does he not get in horse of the year conversation if he just blasts everybody in that race? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I mean, have to get some I mean, consideration, I suppose. I mean, same with Max. Good. What if he wins the Classic? Next is not running. He's going to run. He'll find a race at Delaware Park on a Sunday going two miles on the dirt, and they'll just <laughs> he'll run. Uh, Cogburn's the best horse in training, considering right? the, the Breeders' Cup with him. I mean, I don't know how you don't. I don't know how you can sit there and be like, we've already made hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's accomplished everything. I, yeah, I, I'd be inclined to take a shot for sure. Cogburn, the best horse in training? No. Fierceness. Probably. I I have a big lean toward horses who run in the big races. Like, no, I agree with you. Just pound for pound, Cogburn's the best turf sprinter we've seen. But I, I guess, uh, like, a fair question to me is, is Cogburn 
a more dominant turf sprinter than Torpedo Anna is three-year-old Philly. Yes, Cogburn is exceptionally good in his division. Torpedo Anna barely just held off Gunsong, and I know what everybody's gonna say. I don't want to. I don't. I don't care. Gunsong. She was forty it, to one. It, it's tougher. I mean, I have visions of Silver Bullet Day, which I was nineteen at the time. Didn't know it. I like. I just could not believe. How does she lose these races in the fall of her three-year-old year? And I mean, she had a long campaign. She ran the Black Eyed Susan and the Belmont after the Oaks and the Alabama, et cetera. Uh, you know, and it's like, oh, how does a three year old like it's a big step up against older? An idiomatic, I know she hasn't faced older old. yet. Like it, an idiomatic I'm gonna bet rated. against her. Yeah, idiomatic ran an unbelievable race in the personal incident, too. So I mean it's not like it's not the strongest division this year, but She's never faced a horse like Idiomatic. I mean, I guess Fierceness was her best horse she's ever faced, but Idiomatic's an older mare, so it's not like – I don't know. We'll see. And at Del Mar, you can't let Idiomatic get a head start. She's running the Spencer, which is going to be a walkover, basically, so we'll see how she does. But, yeah, I'm with you. All right. Now, be an exciting time. We'll uh, we'll dish again next week, and, I don't know, maybe two-year-old will catch our eye or something. There's some big two-year-old races. Ferocious is running. You got Chancellor McPatrick at Belmont at Aqueduct at Aqueduct. So there's a lot of um, <laughs> there's a lot of good horses running this weekend. Sins are, what's her name? Sins are Parole. She's running in the Frazette, the best two-year-old filly from Saratoga. So mm. we could have a good gauge on two-year-olds. All right. Maybe she'll face Torpedo Anna next year in the distaff. Well, I can promise you one thing. Torpedo Anna will not be retired, probably. She's McPeak. You got to give him credit. He runs his horses, so I doubt she's retired. Yeah, I mean, a lot of money to be made, so not yeah, that you could not make it in the sales ring, but yeah. I, yeah, I mean, the Apple Blossom. She's sound. Yeah, the Apple Blossom's probably worth like $6 million now, so you got to play for races like that at Oakland. Well, I mean, Oakland, I mean, you can run in there that pattern to the apple blossom and then, you know, basically take off until Saratoga and have tons of money. Yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. You can run in the Derby trail there and not even worry about the Derby. You just want a, right. couple of those, a couple of those, you're set. Yep. So that's God bless the slots. God bless. Right. Them. So Keeneland and Aqueduct. Maybe Santa Anita. I did Santa Anita this past weekend, and they had a great card. I'm giving them credit. So if they have another good one on Saturday, I'll probably do that as well. All right. Well, stay tuned to Horse Racing Nation for that. Prince, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Good luck, everybody. All right. All right good luck.